we will read verses 31 to 38. Let's all rise. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, where I am going you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. And Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, Will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Okay, let's pray. Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We sang of the gospel of your word, Lord, in our worship. We worship you through our tithes and love offerings. And we worship you, Lord, as we humbly bow down and listen and submit to your word, O Lord. We know, O God, that you will be speaking to our hearts. And even as we hear human words, we know, Lord, it will be the Holy Spirit speaking to us through Scripture and filling us with the knowledge of you and your will. So we thank you, Lord. We entrust this moment for your glory, O Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, we can have our seats, brethren. Verse 31. Verse 31 is another pivot point in John's Gospel. Ang sulat ni John, when he was gone. So this is talking about Judas. By this time, wala na si Judas sa presensya sa ginoo. Okay? And it is at this moment that the Lord now begins to deal with his disciples. Okay? Uh, of course, the whole time that Jesus was ministering to them, more or less around three years, Jesus, of course, was teaching his disciples. And he taught them, of course, through his words, and he taught them through his life. But now that he was about to die, he now brings them very, very important teachings. And that's why, brethren, um, again, of course, all the gospel accounts are important. Every teaching of the Lord is important. But if you read the chapters 14, actually from verse 31 of, thir of chapter 13, all the way up to chapter 17, you will see Lord, the Lord's specific teachings for His disciples. Hindi na siya para sa public. This was, these were now teachings for His disciples. And what's beautiful about this portion of John's account of the gospel is it ends with Jesus' prayer in chapter 17. No? Ang ambal sang iban nga commentators, this is the actual Lord's Prayer because this was a prayer that Jesus actually prayed for us. So, kung gusto nyo, magbasa kamo in advance no? and I pray the Holy Spirit will minister to you. Pero starting chapter 13, verse 31, Jesus is now focusing on His disciples. Once again, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in Him. And what's beautiful about 
um, I don't know if you notice, brethren, no? but as much as possible, our worship leaders, ang ginapili nila nga songs are songs that sing about the gospel. Why? Because this is the very reason why a believer sings. We sing of the Lord in the cross. We see of what He accomplished for us. Amo ng pinaka-joy sa Kristiyano, not really in what He does in our life, not in the circumstances that happen, but in what Jesus has already done. Why? Because it is in the cross that Jesus is glorified and that God is glorified in Him. Now again, notice how Jesus emphasizes that it's not just about Him, it's also about the Father. For the Jews, that was important for them to understand that Jesus was not there on His own, that the Father had sent Him. And that's why they were to believe in whom the Father had sent. Okay. And then, in verse, we, we took this up last Sunday, verse 34 and 35. Now, Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. So, we see here a command of the Lord. And the only time that Jesus gave this command was when Judas was not there. Okay? You will see that. Why? Because this command was impossible for Judas to obey. Why? Because Judas was not his disciple. Judas was not a believer. Look what Jesus says in verse 34. A new command I give you, love one another. But does it stop there? No. Jesus said, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. So in other words, the command to love is based on a disciple's experience or belief in the love of God for him. Only a person who has known this love of Jesus that has forgiven him, that has uh, moved him to give his life for our sins, only a true believer can love as Jesus loved us. Okay? Ang muna ang rason, brethren, na ang love na pinapakita sa mga disciples, hindi ang love sa kalibutan. Okay? It's not the same love as the world because our love is based on the love of Jesus for us. Only someone who knows that we did not deserve Jesus' love and yet He showed it to us can look at another person who does not deserve our love and actually love them. Okay? Amen ba? Okay? How many of you will totally agree that in the sight of God, in our sins, we were unlovable. Okay? Amen to that? Amen. Okay? No, hindi nato mabato, no? Pero, amo lang truth, eh. You know, if you don't realize that, you're not saved. Okay? I'll tell, I'll tell you straight. If you did not have never realized that you were so unworthy to receive the forgiveness of Jesus Christ because, you know, what a, uh, what do you call this? What a, we sang it a while ago. What a foul sinner we were. Actually, we still are. <laughs> if you had not seen that, and because of that, you looked to Jesus and said, Lord, save me. Okay? You are not saved. Because there are many who believe they are saved because of a prayer. They're saved because kabalo sila, sinner sila, but they have never realized what a foul sinner they were before the Lord and that we did not deserve the salvation that we've received from Him. Kasi kung amo na ang natabo sa ng heart, brethren, when you look at a person whom you believe is not deserving of your love, 
you will never be able to love them. That's why Jesus gave this command. Wala na si Judas. Why? Judas never believed in Jesus. He never knew who Jesus was. Okay? He never listened to his teachings. Never. And that's why this command, he could not obey. Pero ang tuod na disciple, tungod sa nabato naton, kag nabatsaga naton, ang pagigugbas ang ginoo sa aton, pwede naton. That's why Jesus said, you must love one another. It's not a choice, brethren. If there's any of you this morning who have chosen not to love someone and not to forgive someone, you are sinning against God because God did not give you a choice whether to love or not. He said, if you have experienced my love, you must love one another. By this, verse 35, by this all men will know that you are my disciples. A disciple is someone who follows Jesus. See? So they will know you are his disciples. How? When they see you following him. Okay. When, I'm sorry, if you love one another. No. If. Okay. So see, Lord, you know what the Lord is doing here? He's showing us, just as he knew Judas, he knows his disciples. He knows who of us here okay, are loving as he loved us. He knows, brethren. Okay. But ambal niya, but all men will also know if we, if we are his disciples, if we love one another. Now, verse 33. This is what I want to focus on this morning. So Jesus talked to his disciples and he said, My children, it's an NIV, no? I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me and just as I told you, so I tell you now where I am going, you cannot come. Where was Jesus going? Okay. It's all right not to know because later on we will see Peter ask, where is he going? Okay. But hopefully, as you grow as a believer, eventually you will know. Okay. But where was Jesus going? Jesus was going to the Father. To go back to the Father, he had to die. He had to give his life. And Jesus said, where I am going, you cannot come. Hindi ka mo makaapas. Okay? Now, in the NIV, Jesus says or calls them, my children. Okay? Literally, um, the ESV says, little children. Grabe, no? And the NIV translates it in a way to show what it means. Jesus was not saying they were babies because literally that's what the word means, little children. There's another Greek word for children. Ini mga gamay nga bata. Why was Jesus calling them that? It was a term of endearment. Okay? It's just like today, uh, actually in our church, no, uh, there's, there's this brother uh, in Christ who calls everyone anak. <laughs> Pag ginatawag niya anak, daw ang tanaw niya mga, ako ang inyong atataya, ako, maga, ako yung nagasagod sa inyo. Okay? It's, a, it's a term of endearment. Okay? And this is what Jesus was telling his disciples. Why? What was Jesus telling them? He was telling them, I'm going to be with you only a little while longer. Diba? And it, it was a sad moment. It was a, um, a, a moment that his disciples did not understand. For three years, more or less, Jesus was by their side. John 13 verse 1 says that having loved his own who were in the world, Jesus loved them while he was with them. He taught them, he lived with them, he cared for them. Now he tells them, anak, okay, mga anak, my children, I'm about to leave you. Tapos dugangan pa niya sang, kung di na ko manugkad to, hindi ka mo makaapas. Okay. So it was a very, very confusing and sad moment. Okay. And, and I, I believe, again, 
Jesus uses this term kasi ang ginastorya niya, mga disciples niya, wala na si Judas. Okay? My children. So Jesus knows who they were. Jesus was going to die okay, and they would not be able to go where Jesus was going. As we continue in chapter 14, the Lord explains this more in detail. But the focus in this story is obviously Simon Peter. Okay? In the beginning of John 13, Jesus deals with Judas. Now that he's gone, Jesus deals with his disciple. And there's a reason why Simon Peter is, he is singled out because of a certain character that he has that we're going to see later on. So verse 36, Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? So you notice, brethren, again, these are his disciples. Jesus said, you are all clean. I have chosen you. Hambal niya. Okay? So these were believers. Peter already believed. The rest of the 11, they already believed. But it did not mean that they fully understood everything that was happening yet. In fact, they would only really become very mature after Jesus rose again from the dead, after he ascends into heaven, and the Holy Spirit fills their hearts. That's when all of a sudden, nagmature sila. Hindi perfect, pero nagmature ang ilang understanding. So, ang pagpabangkot ni Pedro, Lord, where are you going? I think it's understandable. Di ba? They, they believed in Him, but their belief still needed to grow. In fact, John 14 verse 5. Let's go a little ahead. No? So, ma-open yung inyong Bibles. John 14 verse 5. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? So hindi lang si Pedro. Okay? Even Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Now continue on to verse 8. Another, another inquiry in a sense. No? Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Kasi hindi nila maintindihan. The Father is in me, I am in the Father, etc., etc. So, kagamo pa sa ilang mind. So, even Philip said, Lord, can you just show us the Father instead of telling us? Ipakita mo na lang. And so, later on, we're going to see what Jesus' answer um, is, is there to that, to that inquiry. And then, verse 22. Look at chapter 14, verse 22. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord... Why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? So, kada mo sa mga questions. Di ba? Amen to that? Go to chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. Okay? Here, in this portion of John's account of the gospel, this is the Lord dealing with His disciples. They had so many questions. Verse 17, some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while you will see me no more, then after a little while you will see me? And because I'm going to the Father, they kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Can you imagine? No? Nag last supper sila, kita, Kabalo na kita kung nung natabo eh. Di ba? Tungkol sa mga painting, mga wood carving, uh, last supper. Pero sila, nagkakaon sila. Wala sila idea. This is my body, this is my blood. Sige sila kaon, sige la ino. Hindi nila maintindihan pa. Hindi pa fully. They were believers. Jesus said, you are all clean. But notice, their belief needed to grow. Di ba? This is why from the beginning of Jesus choosing His disciples all the way up to the end, Jesus continually taught them. Okay? Continually, brethren. I've shared this before. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1. Okay? You, you would think that after Jesus died and after He rose again, Tapos na ang iyang ministry. Okay? 
It, that's, that's not what happened. It's Acts chapter 1, verse 1. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After what? Giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After he rose again from the dead and before he ascended into heaven, the Lord kept on teaching them. Kita nyo? Verse 3, after his, his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave them many convincing proofs. Notice the Lord had to convince them that he was alive. Okay. Grabe, no? He appeared to them over a period of how many days? 40 days after he rose again, before he ascended. For 40 days, he still kept on teaching them. Okay? Now, lest we judge and say, ano klase mga disciples na? Three years sila obdanay sang ginoo, nakita nila ang natabu, ari nakita nila buhi, tapos kinanglan, tuduan sila. Wait, before you judge, are we not like them? Okay? You are not a true disciple unless you have questions, brethren. Amen ba? Okay? Oh, wala nag-amen. Okay? Ang muna problema sa Christianity subong eh. Ang Christianity, ang Christianity subong, kinang lang magtikal te. Nadamo ta, balaan eh. Di ba? But if you're a disciple of Christ living in this world, you should have questions. But they're not supposed to remain questions. They are questions that you bring to Jesus. Di ba? Amen to that? And the Lord will continually answer them. Pero amo nang importante, amo nang nakita natin, brethren, sa mga disciples. True disciples ask questions. Lord, why am I sick? Okay? Uh, diba? But you're not asking because you're doubting. You're asking, Lord, anong rason sini? And if you are a faithful disciple, you will grow in the Word and the Word of God will speak to you. Diba? Amen to that? Lord, why am I sick? You go to Romans 17 and it says, because you did not wear your face mask. Nasa Romans 17. Makita nyo na. I-check nyo. Okay? I'm just joking. Okay? Why are we sick? Why do I have trials, Lord? It's scripture that will answer you. Okay? Why are you sick? Because you have a depraved body. Your body is a sinful body. It is wasting away. See? Why do we have trials? Because you're in the world. Diba? And if you're in the world, you know that, do not escape trials. Okay? Scripture explains to us. See? But you are not a true disciple if you don't bring your questions to the Lord. Some of you have questions, but you don't bring it to the Lord. That's why up to now, you don't have answers. But a true disciple of Jesus, you're always coming to the Lord. Just like Peter, where are you going, Lord? Just like Thomas, Lord, we don't know where you are going. Tapos sa katapusan, chapter 16, na magkot sila, anong bot niya silingon na in a little while? Di siya makanto. Diba? Anong ginahambal niya na makatto siya sa Father? They had no idea, but the Lord kept on teaching them. Okay? Amen to that? Okay. Kung may mga questions ka mo, you're not supposed to go to Google. You're not supposed to go to Oprah. You're not supposed to go to what, whoever it is na mga wais da. No. You go to God and His Word. Brethren, see? Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. In 1 Corinthians 13, look what Paul says in verse 9 up to verse 12. He says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, okay? but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. Okay? Now, some of our brethren in other churches think that 
this speaks about the Bible. But it does not talk about the Bible. It's talking about when we are in eternity with the Lord. Okay? When perfection comes. When is a believer perfect? We are perfect when we are face to face with the Lord. That's when we will know Him 100%. Pero subong, we only know in part. Okay? Amen to that? Okay. Tikalon ka ka Kristiyano kung feeling mo, kabalo ka na. Sang Christianity, kag sang kabuhi. Okay na ko. Ah, hindi. Okay? You notice, when you feel confident, something happens that will question your faith. And all of a sudden, balik ka na naman sa zero. Lord, hindi takakilala gali. <laughs> Di ba? And you just keep on growing. Look at verse 11. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now, verse 12, we see a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully even as I am fully known. See? Walang Kristiyano, walang disciple na makahambal, kapalo na ko parte kay Lord. Okay? See? We humble ourselves and tell ourselves every day, Lord, I still need to know so much about you. And that's why, Lord, I have questions. Diba? And that's why every day I go to His Word. I spend time with the Lord. That's why I fellowship with other believers. When I fellowship with them, we, we have these questions that, Ngaamo ni si Lord, no? Ngaamo ni ang ginambal sa word. And, and, you know, pastors and teachers and other believers will be there to teach us and help us mature. Okay? Hambal ni Paul, there was a time, I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. Pero pag naging mature ka na, you, when you put, become a man, we put childish ways behind. Diba? Some believers were still childish. Why? Because we have questions, but we don't come to God for answers. We have questions, but we don't seek the answer. So what happens? We do not grow. Okay? Believers, disciples, grow in their understanding of God, brethren. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 9 to 10. Turn with me there. Okay. Colossians chapter 1. See, that's why when Peter asked the question, Jesus did not rebuke him. Later on, Jesus will rebuke him. We will we'll see why. But when Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? Gin sa Batman ni Lord. Okay. Later on, gin rebuke niya. But why? Because he was there to teach them. For this reason, verse 9, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of His will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Amo na ang Kristiyano, brethren. Amo na ang tuod ng disipulo. Ang tuod ng disipulo, punong puno sang spiritual wisdom kag understanding hindi 100% but god fills us with his will and understanding that's what a disciple is of course question is is that what we are there are many believers uh, many christians who so, who are so full of worldly wisdom and worldly understanding that you don't you don't wonder anymore why hindi ma-reflect sa ilang kabuhi okay ang ilang pagkakristyano they wala sila idea but this a will sa ginoo okay kag sa iyang knowledge verse 10 and we pray this 
in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord, you may please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in what? The knowledge of God. Growing. Okay. Diba? God is good. Very good. And all the time? Okay, after that, what's next? God is what? Ang iban sa Kristiyano, hasta sa God is good na lang. That's why when something bad happens, they question God. Because all they know about God is God is good. No, there's so much to grow. brethren. Growing in the church is not attendee ako, tapos member ako, tapos nag serve na ako sa ministry, mamaya leader na ako, elder na ako, deacon na ako, kilala na ako. No, that's not growth. That's just everyday life. The true growth of a Christian, of a believer is, I'm growing in my knowledge of who God is. And it never stops. That's what's beautiful about the Christian life, brethren. Supposedly, we never stop growing. But the sad thing is, some of us have chosen not to grow at all. Okay? And if you ask me, that's a little scary. Why? Because a true disciple is always asking questions. Eh? Lord, where are you going? Why, why in, in, in a little while, Lord? Lord, can you show us the Father na lang? Instead of telling us, you and the Father are one. We're always asking. And we're always coming to the Lord, always seeking to know Him more. Second Peter 3, verse 18. <laughs> Some of you know this verse by heart. Diba? Peter simply said, but grow, it's not surprising that Peter writes this. Okay? Because he experienced it. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grow. Grow. A true disciple grows. A true disciple asks questions. Diba? How many of you ask, Lord, why not COVID-19? Diba? How many of you have the answers? Not from the IATF, not from the World Health Organization, not from all of these scientists. How many of you have the answer from Scripture? Why COVID-19 is here? Yeah, see? Why? You have not grown as a disciple if you have never asked that question and sought the Lord for His answer. If all you're thinking about is the vaccine and what the World Health Organization is saying and what politicians are saying, you're just a human being. But if you're a disciple, you understand what Scripture says. Why is all of this happening to us? Why, Lord? See, it's all right to ask as a disciple. If you bring it to the Lord. John 16. Kasi eventually, look what happens. John 16, verse 29 to 31. So after all of these teachings of the Lord, then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Diba? Hindi pa sila totally mature, pero there came a time before Jesus died na medyo na klaro, Jutay. So, now we know and believe who you are, brethren, that's the very point of Jesus teaching us. That's the very point of Scripture. Not to give us life lessons. Not to give us a, you know, a advice. Not to give us a better life. It's for us to believe. Now we believe that you came from God. 
<laughs> now look at the Lord's answer sa verse 31. You believe at last, Jesus said. <laughs> now, hindi ka kabala ko pa. Ano kaya ang tono si Nino? Is, you believe at last. Okay? Or, you believe at last. Okay, whatever it is, hambal ni Lord, ay, kanamis ang feeling. At least, nagapati na ka mo. Because that's the very reason why Jesus taught them for them to believe. Okay? Brethren, the Word of God is not good advice. It's not to give us a better life. It's not just wisdom or whatever. It's for us to believe in who He is. Now, Lord, and you know, brethren, every day, okay, I don't care how old you are as a believer. I don't care how long you've been reading the Bible, but if you're reading Scripture and the Holy Spirit is ministering to you, every day you are saying what the disciples said in verse 30, Ay, Lord, salamat. You're speaking clearly. Now I believe. Diba? In who you are. Uh, right? Verse 33 of chapter 16. Have you ever read... Okay? One of the questions I, I shared with you was, Lord, why do I have trials? Why do I have problems? Diba? Tanong ang ni Lord. In this world, you will have what? Of course, that trouble speaks about the trouble of there being disciples in persecution, etc. Pero, dalaman na ang kwan. Everyday trouble sa kalibutan. Ang ESB gani. Ang word ng inusar tribulation. Di ba? Di ba ang tribulation, tungkol sa hindi mo maintindihan, mas bugat siya sa trouble. Di ba? Oh, grabe ang tribulation ko. Okay? Anong butsiling mo sa tribulation? Basta, bugat. <laughs> okay? Anong habal ni Lord? In this world, you will. Ah, Lord, kaya pala. Hmm. Di ba? Now I believe. Notice? You ask the question, you go to Scripture, go to the Lord, He answers you. What happens? You grow in your knowledge of God and you end up believing in Him. Amen? Yeah. Peter had all of these questions. All his disciples had all of these questions. Good! Because that's what makes you a disciple. Now, let's go back to John, 14, uh, John 13. I'm sorry. So, Jesus replied, okay, where are we? Verse 36. So, Peter asks him, Lord, where are you going? Okay, Jesus replies, where I am going, you cannot follow now. Now, notice, brethren, how Jesus assures his disciples. Kasi kanina, ang ambal ni Lord, like I told the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So, siguro nakadlok si Pedro. Lord, where are you going? So, Jesus answers him again, where I am going, you cannot come, but you will follow later. Diba? Diba assurance na? Right? So, here, Jesus is assuring his disciples, in a way, he was confirming that they were really his disciples. Because in John 12, verse 26, Jesus says, Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. Okay, now next Sunday, as we continue with John 14, mas ikaklaro pa sang gino, kung anong butsiringo ng later on, you will follow me. Pero notice how he's assuring Peter, okay, well, right now, you cannot come with me. Pero later on, you will follow. Don't worry. Diba? So, kanami isang feeling, right? It was an assurance. But then, notice how Peter answers. When Peter asked a question, the Lord lovingly answered him, but when Peter answers in verse 37, it brings one of the strongest, I don't know if it's a rebuke or more of a truth upon Peter. Because Peter asks, Lord, why can't I follow you now? Okay. 
I will lay down my life for you. Grave si Peter. No? Now, this is a little confusing. What was Peter doing? Was he boasting? Diba? Was he boasting in his commitment to the Lord? Okay. Was he boasting before other disciples? We don't know, eh, di ba? Kaya hindi nakasulat, eh. Or was he being, sa English, ang word is rash. No, kadali sa imo magambar. Di ba? Sino maupod sa evangelism? Ako. Kanto ta sa sulu. Hindi ako. Okay? So, no, kadali sa imo mag-yes, pero sang nabalan mo sa hulog, eh, ay hindi na lang. No, di ba? <laughs> I remember one of my favorite stories when I was growing up as a Christian. Dara kami, nagkaplano ng ministry. So, ang, ang balsang iban, sino maupod, mga evangelism ta, yes, upod ko, upod ko, etc., etc. Tapos pag ang nila, kanto ta sa bilibid, sa muntin lupa, ay hindi na ko, hindi na ko, nakadlok ko, nakadlok ko. So, relax lang sa pag mo. Now, we don't know. Was, was Peter like that? Okay. You remember the story, uh, not, not the story, Peter had the tendency to, ano, to speak up. Okay? So when Jesus was washing his feet, remember? Um, John, uh, John 13, Gapon. Okay? He came to, verse 6, he came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? So imagine if, if Jesus had already started to wash the disciples' feet, ang iba nagipos lang eh. For sure, hindi nila naintindihan. But when it comes to Peter, he speaks up eh. And he says, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus tells him, Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you I'm sorry, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Anong sapat ni Peter? No! Lord! <laughs> you will never wash my feet. Ah, grabe, no? Ano na siya? It's, it's hard to judge, no? I don't want to give a judgment. But it's just like what we saw a while ago. Lord, can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you, Lord. Oh, grabe, si Pedro, no? Let's go to Matthew 16. Because Matthew records something that you will see the common denominator with Peter. Okay? First, let's start with verse 13 because this is the good part. Okay? When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then Jesus, and then Jesus asked them, but what about you? Okay. Who do you say I am? Okay. Sino nagtindog kag nagsabat? Simon Peter. But this was the good part. Okay. Because Simon Peter answers, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now look at Jesus. He says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of John, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. So, ang sabat ni Peter was from the Lord. In other words, ang nabalan mo parti sa akon, hindi halin sa imo, hindi halin sa tawo, halin sa akon. Now, go to verse 21. Look how the tide changes. Look how the wind changes. Okay? From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things and at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day rise again. Okay, now who stands up? It's in verse 22. Look, Peter na naman. Peter took him aside. No, notice, huh? Peter took him aside and he and began to what? Rebuke him. Bro, busy Pedro, get rebuked niya si Jesus. Abalya, Lord, uh, never, Lord. This shall never happen to you. You know, this is the common denominator of, of Peter. Diba? May tendency siya mag, 
don't know. I, it's hard to say. Was he boasting? Was he just a confident person? Diba? Believe sa sarili? Or was he, did he have a strong personality? I don't know. Pero tanaw ako, he takes Jesus aside. It, ginpalayo niya sa disciples, Lord, anong ginahambal mo man? Anong ginahambal mo? Mapatay ka? Never, Lord! No, oh, grabe, no? Siyempre, ginrebuke siya ni Lord, di ba? Get behind me, Satan. And what is Jesus' rebuke? Verse 23. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of man. Okay. It's like you're listening to a preacher saying, as Christians, we need to suffer for the Lord. And some of us are saying, sobra naman. Diba? Gusto ko mag-enjoy sang kabuhi. So, what's happening with you? You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of man. Okay? It's the same thing when Jesus was washing his feet. Nagambal na si Lord. You know, you do not understand what I'm doing. You'll understand later. No, Lord! <laughs> Grabe, di ba? You shall never wash my feet. Why did Peter answer that way? Because he did not have in mind the things of God. Ginahambala na siya gani, hindi siya nagapamati. You will understand later, no, Lord, you'll never wash my feet. Grabe, huh? Here is Jesus now saying, where I am going, you cannot come, but you will follow later. No, Lord, why can't I go with you now? <laughs> diba? Grabe, no? He did not have in mind the things of God because the, what, what, what was the mind of Christ? I'm going, I'm going to die and I'm going to the Father. Hindi pa ako maapas. Maapas ka mo, the soul pa lang. Next time pa. Pero maapas ka mo. No! Grabe si Pedro, no? He just followed his own ways. Now, was he boasting before other disciples? That's what some commentaries say. But we don't know. I think this was just probably the character of Peter. But one thing, brethren, is obvious in this story. Okay? Peter did not know where Jesus was going. Ba? Correct? Amen? And yet, he boasted that he would lay down his life for him. Okay? He did not know where... Jesus was going, and yet he said, Lord, I'll follow you. Okay. <laughs> Ravenna. You cannot boast and commit yourself to something that you have no idea of. Diba? You have to understand. See? You have to understand. The other way to put it in Christianity is you have to count the cost. Okay? It's true you're a believer. Okay? You're born again. Jesus loved you. You want to love him back. Okay? And many of us, we have that tendency, Lord, I want to love you, Lord, with all my heart. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, God will ask you for your heart. And then you will say, Lord, pwede next week na lang. Okay? Mama, abi ko, bago ko lang nakambal na, you will give me your heart. Okay? It's like we're singing that song, di ba? We have that worship song. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. It doesn't sound like that, but, okay. Ang iba na gahibi pa. I'll give you my heart. Right after the song, Jesus says, kanto ta sa tapas, kapis. Ah, bulik ta kay Mr. Mads. Lord, si Pastor Ike na lang. Lord, siya ang pastor. <laughs> nga ako pa makanto. Okay? Ah, bago ka lang nagkanta, Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. Eh, no? Di ba? Now again, lest we put down Peter. Okay? I think the Holy Spirit will make it clear this morning that we're like him. Di ba? We're like him. Verse 38, then Jesus answered, Will you really lay down your life for me? Okay. What a question, brethren. Okay. If any of you have ever said that to the Lord sometime in your life, 
And Jesus comes to you and says, Will you really lay down your life for me? Diba? And this was not a question awaiting an answer. It was a question with Jesus knowing the answer. Diba? Tuod ka, Pedro. Will you really lay down your life for me? And then Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Yeah. Okay. Jesus was not predicting. Huh? Okay. Jesus is not a fortune teller. Jesus is not a, a man who can read your mind. Jesus knows you. He knew Peter. I tell you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. I tell you the truth. Okay? Hindi siya kwan, ha? Woo! Siguro, basi. No, hindi. Mambadya, pamad ni Lord, I tell you the truth. Peter, you will disown me three times. Ang kaluoy kay Pedro, abo ni. Again, and this is not judging because as I continue the sermon, I think all of us will realize we're just like him. So Mark 14, turn with me to the Gospel of Mark. Here we see again the character of Peter. No? You, instead of thinking like God, he thinks like man. Okay? So, verse 29, Mark chapter 14. Peter declared, Even if all fall away, I will not Grave, no? Nice to say, but so Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. Ara, ginambal na ni Lord, ha? Di ba? Oh, tanawa si Pedro sa verse 31. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. Woo! Grabe, no? <laughs> and all the disciples said the same. You notice that? It's, it's a repeat of what the Lord says. You do not have in mind the things of God. You have in mind the things of man. Why? Because man, all of us, may tendency kita magboast. Eh. But when it comes to the Lord, brethren, we have to be careful. Again, yes, Peter was a disciple. Okay? This is not Judas anymore. This is now Peter. He is a believer. Okay? But what was happening? What was happening was, na, Peter was not focusing in the Lord. He was focusing on himself. Was he being emotional? Maybe. Diba? Kasi, grabe ang love niya para kay Lord eh. But his words reflected his own boasting rather than his trust in the Lord. Let's look at another account sa Luke chapter 22. You know, that's what's nice about the four Gospels. You will notice that God uses each author in different ways. It's the same gospel, but each one is recording according to what the Holy Spirit emphasizes in their mind. Now look at what Luke records in Luke 22, verse 31. Jesus speaking to Simon says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked, to sift you as wheat. Okay? Someone asked me, the, nagbasa siya ng Job eh. Sabi niya, si Satan galing eh. Ginapresenta niya ang iyang uh, kaugulingon sa Diyos. Oh, yes. That's how great our God is, brethren. Read it carefully. Satan asks permission. Okay? He will come to God and say, Itong si Ricky Benitez, pwede ko ba i-sift as wheat? So he asks permission. Okay. Si Lord ang nagkasabat, 
Okay. <laughs> Kibot ka, no? Nag-okay ka, Lord. Have you ever read Job? Diba? If you read Job, you'll be surprised. Eh. Satan was roaming around the earth. Okay? The Lord asks him, Oh, din ka, Halin. Diba? Oh, galibot lang ko. Habali, Lord, have you considered my servant, Job? Nah, no. Kung ko ako si Job, Lord, tani, naghipos ka na lang. Nalo ka <laughs> Diba? Siya pa ang lagabal kay Satan eh. Have you considered my servant Job? You know why? Because God knew Job. Throughout the whole book of Job, even with all the struggles with the words and the friends of Job, God knew his, his son. He knew his disciple. That's why when Satan asked permission, habal ni Lord, okay. It's the same with Peter. Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. Verse 32, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Oh, diba? Now, if you were Simon and you heard Jesus say this, anong response mo? Lord, salamat. Grabe, isisift ako galing, Lord. Pero salamat. Nag-pray mo ko galing, Lord, na hindi ako maano. Salamat, Lord. Ha? Oh, diba? I think that's a good way of responding, Right? How did Peter respond? Verse 31. I'm sorry, verse 34. I'm sorry. <laughs> 33. 32? Okay, no, 33. But he replied, Lord! Ah, na naman, no? I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Simon, bago lang ako nagambal sa imo, eh. Hindi, <laughs> Lord. Okay. Notice Peter. His mindset, maybe it was just him, but you know, we read in Mark that all the disciples also boasted, right? That's what we saw. You see, when your mind is of man, it's natural for man to boast. Eh? And the sad thing is, even in our being disciples, we bring it to our life with Christ. When one of the first things, brethren, that the Lord deals with us is we do not boast in ourselves. It is all in Christ, brethren. Following Christ is not an emotional decision. And it should never be, brethren. We must be careful that we are not rash with our statements of commitment. Commitment is required. But you don't boast in yourself. Diba? Because our being disciples is not about self-effort. Our being disciples is about our boasting in Christ. Okay? Amen to that? Yeah. Diba? Our trust is in Christ, brethren. In the book of Acts, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Lord said, you wait, huh? relax lang kamo. Hindi lang kamo ano yung malakat, hulaton nyo ang power sa Holy Spirit. Okay. In the book of Romans, Paul said, it is God who establishes you through His gospel, ang Lord. Sa so 1 Corinthians, it was Paul who said, I'm not eloquent and I'm not a man of wisdom but I boast in the Lord ang Baldi Pablo. Sa Galatians, we walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh. In Ephesians, we are to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Grabe, no? In Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So first Thessalonians, it is God who sanctifies us through and through, no one else. Okay? And you go to First Timothy, Second Timothy, Jude, First Peter, Second Peter, brethren, it's all the same message. A disciple does not boast, brethren. Okay? In ourselves. The moment we boast in ourselves, we follow the footsteps of Peter. Okay? And Jesus 
will ask us the same question. Will you really lay down your life for me? Now, let's make one thing clear, brethren. A disciple should lay down his or her life for the Lord. Okay? Dapat klaro siya. But, we're not trusting in ourselves. See? And that's what the Lord was dealing with Peter. Peter, like every other disciple, the moment they trusted in themselves, Jesus would come and tell them, will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth. Niba? And, I, and I, I believe there are many of us who have that experience. There are times we feel strong in the Lord, feeling natin every day, nagabasa ta Bible, do kanami sa righteousness ko, do okay na okay ko. Tapos nagatayth pa ko sa church, nagaserve pa ko sa, sa worship team, sa ushers, pastor ako, etc. Kanami sang feeling, all of a sudden, boom, a temptation comes, you fall pa. All of a sudden, back to zero ka naman, Lord. Okay. It's just the Lord saying, I tell you the truth. <laughs> Satan has asked permission to sift you like wheat. Don't trust in yourself. Diba? As human as we are, may ara kita na ginatawag na high moments with the Lord. May ara man ta low moments. But no, the, the whole walk of a believer is walking in trust. Total trust, brethren in the Lord. So, we need to make it clear. Yes, a disciple is willing to lay down his or her life for the Lord. Okay? But, number one, our total trust is in Him, not in ourselves. Amen? Second, before you give a statement of commitment, you count the cost. Okay? The, the Lord does not want you to take a leap in the dark and say, Lord, I will follow you. No. That's why, again, Scripture. Okay? Scripture shows us what it means to be a disciple. And then you say, yes, Lord, I will follow you. Help me, Lord. Pero, pinapakita sang ginoo sa aton, ang cost. Okay? Turn with me. Luke chapter 14. Here, how, how clear the Lord makes it with regards to our walk with Him as a disciple, brethren. The, the sad thing today is we invent our own Christianity without coming to the Lord and saying, Lord, ano ba ang imo nga ginapangita sa akon so that I can count the cost. Well, verse 26, Luke 14. One of the most difficult verses, brethren. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Someone told me, Pastor, you need to clarify that huh? because we have young children here. But si, after some pag preach, mo sini, aki ganila ang ilang parents, they will hate them. No, that's not what the Lord is talking about. He's not talking about everyday life. He's talking about your being a disciple. As a disciple of Christ who has decided to follow Him, my total allegiance really makes it look like you hate your father and mother. Eh? Why? Because there will come a time, even your father or mother, or, who does it say? Your wife or your children or your brothers and sisters will not understand your commitment. They will not understand. But you see, you have decided to follow Christ. You've decided to, fe- to become His disciples. How many of us we made a commitment to the Lord and we compromised because of our family. Mm. <laughs> How many of us may, may vow ta na ginambal kay Lord? All of a sudden, yung anak naton may, di ba? Ang mga ginakuan ko, Pirmi, na maserve ko kay Lord. 
Tapos sambal sa kanak mo, dad, magkapistuha naman ta. Ay, hindi ko siya kung open pang kapistuha, no? pero dad, magkapistuha naman ta. Anak, maserve ko kayo, daddy naman, daddy. O sige na nga, brother man, hindi ako makaserve, kay importante yung family. Uh, Di ba? You know this? So unless you hate your father and mother and wife and children, brothers and and even who? Even his own life. You cannot be my disciple. You cannot. Okay? You know what Jesus is saying? No compromise. You want to be my disciple? You want to be my disciple? You walk with me. No compromise. That's why I, 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 I always use that example na yung mga wives na aridi din, nag-serve ang mga bana nyo, or suli, ang mga bana din, nag-serve ang inyong wife, tapos yung kareklamo ko mo, kabalik siya, Sunday na Sunday, o oh, makadugay, o oh, makaserve na naman, ikaw na naman, ikaw na naman, hindi, relax lang. Kung, kung tuod nag, ang inyong bana or asawa, disciple, the Lord, they're following the Lord. You step back and say, Lord, you deserve Eh? Children, your parents are serving. Kadugay sang imo nga kwan nga ano You understand, children? Your parents are serving. If I don't know if they're serving God. But that's what the Lord is saying. Anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. And then Jesus continues, Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Uh, diba? Claro, claro, example ni Lord. Diba? And this kamagamal na pa Christian, Christian ka, pa disciple, disciple ka, count the cost, anay. Lord, what are you going to ask from me? Okay. Does this mean giving up? My, my friends who are still in the world and who will attract me and, and, and lure me to the world, does this mean, Lord, that I choose the, the TV shows and the websites that I go to, Lord? Does that mean that the, ho, kung dapat the whole Sunday, Lord, I give up for you, Lord? Napiskan magambal ang ako nga example lang niya, not giving a blanket statement. Kung magambal ang employer na masulod ka Sunday, will we be bold enough to say, Sir, masimba ko, anay. Oh, Di ba? Now, that's just an example. Lang. I'm not saying that's what you should do. But you're so determined to follow the Lord that you're counting the cost. Di ba? You're counting the cost. Because you don't start building and then stop. Right? Verse 31. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask, for terms of peace, diba? Count the cost. Where do you find the cost in Scripture? Diba? And every time you understand that, you say, Lord, help me. Lord, I'm willing to, to pay the cost, but Lord, yet not I, but the grace of God that is in me. Diba? Lord kay Peter. But look at verse 33. How does the story end? Brethren, here is discipleship. Huh? Not that lampstand discipleship. This is Jesus' discipleship. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be... My, uh, brethren, I tell you, if you're not going to... <laughs> bow down your heart this morning and say, Lord, 
Mas, mas hindi ako disciple. Di ba? Kasi ito naman mahal ni Lord. No? Anyone who does not give up everything he has cannot, cannot be my disciple. Wow! But you know what's what, what's beautiful about this whole gospel, brethren, is this. Eh? Si Lord ang nagambal, di ba? Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When the Lord opens your heart and tells you who you are, see, and you begin to walk with the Lord, it's not you, it's Him. Eh? Di ba? Every step of a disciple is all God. But here is Jesus just saying, Anak, dapat klaro. If you're going to walk with me, as my disciple, you have to give up everything. Now, don't worry, because it's not only going to be one sitting. Diba? But you're going to see it in your life, brethren. There will be things that the Lord will ask you to give up. Even as simple as time, brethren. How many of us have to give up the comfort of sleeping? to wake up early to pray. Di ba? Kasi ang excuse natin for me, Lord, nagadali ko eh. May trabaho ko, Lord eh. I have to study, Lord eh. I have to do this, Lord eh. It eh. Wake up earlier. Give up! The one hour before you usually wake up, give it up so that you can follow me as a disciple. And sp- di ba? As simple as that, there are so many of us who are not willing to give it up. No wonder we're not walking with Him. We think we're walking with Him, but we're actually not. Ay, brethren, I tell you, how many times do we have to come to the Lord and check it? Lord, am I, am I being the pastor you want me to be? Am I being the worker you want me to be? Am I being the Christian that you want me to be? Diba? And we go back to John 21. John chapter 21. How does it end? Look how John ends his gospel. He ends it with Peter. Okay? And here is the Lord speaking to Peter, to, to Simon. No? When they, verse 15, John 21. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said, look, 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 look out the answer of Peter. Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. So, hindi na siya nag-boast, di ba? Amalia, Lord, you know, you know me. And then Jesus keeps on asking, okay? again, verse 16, Jesus said, can you imagine three times, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. So Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now, some say, it's not written, but some say that the reason Jesus asked three times was to counter the three times that Peter denied him. Okay? See? That's what they say. It's not written here. No? Um, It's not specifically mentioned. But that's what he says. Now, two times Jesus said, in the, you only see this in the Greek. Simon, son of John, do you agape me? Okay. That, that's the highest form of love that Greek literature only used for the gods. Do you know that? And three times Peter answered, Lord, you know me. You know that I feel I owe you. Okay? Now notice how Peter was humbled. Okay? Hindi na siya nagboast eh. Pero Lord, kilala mo ko. 
I love you, but I'm not going to say it's agape. Okay? I'm not going to say it's agape. You know, one of the things, brethren, that has, that we as believers need to accept is that Jesus knows us. Okay? We, as Christians, we try and bring about a, ano ba? a, a picture of strength. Diba? And faith. You notice that when, let's say, in fellowships, people will ask, oh, sinong gusto mag-share? Okay. Sino may problema? Hindi automatic, may nag-aalsa ka mo, te, pwede, niyo, pwede niyo pray kay grabe ang temptation. May trials ako subong eh. Daw madulaan ko faith eh. Wala. You know why? Because, human nature, even in the church, and that's why it's sad. Because ang gatabo sa Christianity natin is it's, it's a Christianity meant to please men rather than to please God. Because, because we're, we're so ano, in pleasing men, we want everyone to know that we are strong Christians. Di ba? We want everyone to know na, na Oy, wala, wala ko problema, wala ko trials, grabe ka, faithful ang ginoo, grabe gin. No, not many of us are willing to say, can you pray for me? Because I'm about to lose my faith. Di ba? Not many of us. Okay. And, you know, I don't want to use the word hypocrite. But you know what the Greek word hypocritos means? It means to be an actor. Ang word na hypocrite, masakit. Di ba? Pero ang hypocrito gali, sa Greek, artista. Okay? Hmm. Sino sa aton dre, galit na galit, nalipat na ko sa ngalan sa artista, nakalaban ni Sharon Cuneta. Di ba? Kontrabida. O, oh, di ba? Kasi ang galig nila mag-acting eh. Na pag nakita mo in real life, hala, ikaw ang kalaban ni Sharon. O, oh, di ba? Kasi ang galing mag -act. Brethren, being a disciple is not about acting. Ano ba? Are we supposed to be boasting in this church that we are all strong? And that we are, and you know, one of the ways that other Christians do that, when you're sharing your problem, what do they say? Ano ka? Wala ka ba faith? You know what we used to do in elementary? We would go like that. You know what this means? Back to you. Oh, di ba? Nga ginaakigan mo ko na wala ko faith. Nga ikaw ba? Makaboast ka? Na 100% ang imo ka faith? Brethren, we're, we're acting. We're pleasing men. No, brethren. That's why you know what this story is telling us. Peter and the rest of the disciples, that's us. Lord, where are you going? Where, you, where I'm going, you cannot come. You will follow later. No, Lord. I will follow you. Even if I have to die. And the Lord said, no, Peter. You're going to deny me three times. Diba? Pero later on, kanami kay Lord, eh, diba? That's why John ends with a command to follow Jesus. But this time, Peter is following Jesus with what? With a submissive and humble heart. Lord, you know me. You know, how, you know how, how good our God is? In the last question of Jesus, in the, the third time Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you feel it on me? And then Peter answers, Lord, you know. You know. I'm not going to boast. But you know. You see, brethren, I, I do not doubt that those of us here who are disciples, true believers, I know you love the Lord. We love the Lord. But we also have to bow down and say, Lord, kilala mo ko. You know my struggles. You know my weakness. 
di ba? You know what it is that will sweep my feet away from my walking with you. You know what it is, Lord. It can be money, it can be a girl, or a boy, or my husband, or my wife, or my family. It can be my work, my business. It can be anyone or anything that will sweep my feet away from following you. But Lord, I love you. Eh. No? Lord, I love you. Lord, I need your strength and I need your grace so that I can lay down my life for you. Diba? There's no boasting there. I mean, there is boasting there. But it's boasting in him. Diba? Amen? Because every time we read about Peter's denial, how quick we are to judge him. Diba? And yet, you know, we're, we'll go to the actual denials at chapter 18. And that's where we'll talk about it. How many of us have denied the Lord in our life? Diba? How many of us here? Diba? See? So, the Gospels simply show us that's who, this is who we are. But we praise God for His grace. Diba? It's the Lord who kept His disciples strong. It's the Lord and His power that kept them going. No other reason. So that when you go to eternity, brethren, and you stand before the Lord, you're not going to say, Lord, I have served you, huh? Allah, delikado, basi ang ulap, maging apoy. Why? Kasi in heaven, you don't boast in anyone else except God. You are not going to stand up and say, Oh Lord, nagpastor ko pila kay years. Huh? <laughs> Naghirap ako. Gin sacrifice ko ako ng kabuhi, Lord. No, you know, what, you know what you're going to do when you stand up in eternity? You're going to see the Lamb of God as if He had been slain. And you're going to say, Lord, it was all by grace. I cannot boast. Okay? In fact, kabalo ko, Lord, na kulang. Kabalo ko, Lord. The only reason I'm here in eternity, Lord, is because of you. That's all. And don't wait for eternity. <laughs> okay? In your life, in your ministry, in your marriage, in your work, in your business, brethren, do not Trust in yourself. Walk as a disciple. And show him. Right? Show him that your total trust is in him. Okay? Let's pray. Lord, many of us here, if not all of us, Lord, you know we love you. You know we want to walk with you. But we are trusting in your strength and in your power and nothing else, Lord. Some of us here have had the tendency to boast about our Christianity because of self-effort. Lord, humble us. Remind us of who we are. Lord, we are so much like Peter. Our tendency to boast. Our tendency to speak rashly, Lord. But in the same way, we are like Peter because in the end, Peter was humbled. And he bowed down before you and boasted in you and in no one else, Lord. May we all be like Peter. If there's a need to rebuke us, Lord, rebuke us need to be strengthened is always there, Lord. May we walk as your disciples strengthened by you always. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. And we end our worship, Lord, trusting totally upon your strength and grace for the rest of the day. Thank you, Lord. All glory and praise belong to you alone, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's bless the Lord, brethren. Just... Thank you.